Thank you, and thank Brian for inviting me to speak here. It is indeed a pleasure. But I had to laugh when Brian inserted more senior. Because although it's true that Cody is decades older, I'm feeling creakier and more senior every day. Fortunately, everyone else in Cody is younger, so no worries. All right. Now, how can I get it to, there we go. Cody has a very long history. The seeds were planted in 1976 when Bob Pirelli and Courtney Coleman traveled from Harvey Mudd College in Claremont, California to Ithaca, New York. The occasion was an NSF summer workshop run by Bill Lucas at Cornell University when creating modules of applied mathematics for undergraduate math courses. There is a series of books that came out of this. I don't have the references at hand right now. So I also attended that workshop. How do I, okay. Bob, Court, and I worked together on differential equations. Two of their memorable contributions were shaking a string to rest and tossing a tennis racket. And one of mine, which was long before computers drew solutions, was how to do by hand sketching solutions to ODEs. We had a wonderful time and became long-term colleagues. About a decade later, I traveled to a joint mathematics meeting hauling a set of computer pictures that John Hubbard at Cornell had initiated. I ran into Bob and told him with great excitement, I had something to show him, could we find a place to talk? Bob patted his briefcase and said he had something to show me. We both had the same news. Computer graphics would revolutionize the study of ODEs. John Hubbard's favorite example, x prime equals x squared minus t, Burley and Coleman have zillions of wonderful examples. Um, this means that we're no longer restricted to the minority of differential equations that have analytic solutions, and we can see the behaviors of solutions to any ODE. This example I've often used with non-mathematicians where X is a population of animals and X prime is the rate of change, which depends on the growth of the population, that's a growth rate of two plus cosine t gives a seasonal fluctuation. Then we subtract a term for crowding because the population can decrease if it's too crowded. And we subtract another constant rate of decrease due to hunting licenses, which could be the number of hunting licenses issued um, in a given year. And just that number C makes a huge difference. If C equals one, you get the graph on the left, which has many sustainable solutions. So there's many places where you'll get nice cyclical oscillations of populations. But if you double the number of hunting licenses, there's no sustainable solution. No matter where you start, all of a sudden the population is gone. So Bob ran with this idea. He and Court applied to the NSF for a grant to set up a consortium for ordinary differential equations with experiments. That's the, what CODE stands for. And that was 1991. Our mission was to inform and help our colleagues teaching ODEs how to take advantage of the sudden amazing new opportunities. We were seven institutions. Harvey Mudd, Cornell, RPI, Washington State, St. Olaf College, West Valley Community College in California, Stetson University in Florida. So it was a fairly diverse group. This first grant in 1991, each institution hosted a one week summer workshop for some 30 colleagues from all over the country. They were wildly successful 
Participants went on to give dozens of talks and workshops at regional meetings, conferences, department, colloquia. He gave a lot of contributed paper sessions at JMM, at ICTCM, which is the International Conference for Technology and Collegiate Mathematics. It was very big at that time in the 90s. And we had a newsletter three times a year, spring, fall, and summer. We were able to get a second grant to continue that mission with the same seven institutions participating. And we continued the newsletter and the sessions at meetings, and we made a hugely successful ODE architect software package. It was just for Windows, unfortunately, but it won the distinction of being named by Forbes magazine as one of the nine best digital projects on the planet in December 1998. This was not just the list of math problems programs or even academic programs. ODE Architect was the only math program so honored from over a thousand entries. Unfortunately, like so many other software packages, this one fell victim to constantly upgraded systems and publishers difficulties with how to market software and maintain it. So our funding had run out by 2010, Bob and Court set up a third grant, which changed our name to Community of ODE Educators, to try to continue our mission without funding. In cooperation with the Claremont College's library, we could do this. That Claremont College's library is the publisher of the Journal of Humanistic Mathematics. So they already have a system set up and we were able to make a parallel system. So our website has a refereed electronic code e journal and other re resources for teaching differential equations. Bob's hope at the time had been that this would be a, a one-stop place you could do anything. So without any more funding, we are delighted that Simi ODE has taken up the workshop meetings role that excites and energizes those of us who are teaching ODEs. So we have retreated in a way to focus on maintaining the global reach of this online journal. This is a recent map of how, where pe um, things have been downloaded. The biggest circle is in Europe, over 11,000 downloads in the US and Canada, we're some 8,000, but we get things from all over the world. There are 130, more than 130 countries from which we've had downloads out of the 190 that are listed on the internet as countries of the world. Um, from the beginning, fully two thirds of those downloads are outside the United States. And that's what makes us feel we have a real mission. It includes exotic locations like Nepal, Cambodia, Vietnam, Mauritius, Dominica, Lesotho, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Tajikistan, Turkmenistan, Uzbekistan. Uh, it's wonderful. And this is what keeps us going. So let's talk about the Code E Journal. It's peer reviewed open access publication it consists of articles that are expository in nature with aim to advance the art and practice of teaching and learning of ODEs. Projects are units that instructors can use in their classrooms. Uh, we're not strictly limited to modeling, um, but of course that's very big. Resources give links to many relevant text and software sites, including, of course, CIMI ODE. We also have begun doing special issues to so far. In 2018, we did the first one, which is volume 12. And in 2020, we've been doing a second special issue, volume 14, and let's look at those. 
The 2018 special issue had a theme linking differential equations to social justice and environmental concerns. So you see from this display, which had one picture from every paper that um, it was quite a variety of stuff. And the topics included climate change, um, spread and prevention of malaria in Central America, transmission of cholera in a population with contaminated water. But then there were several adaptations of the epidemiological SIR models to scenarios that support the common good. There's a whole list there. Um, Laura Lee Koss was the author. She gives great references to any of those, um, every one of those items. The Mathematics of Gossip was a paper created by students at Colorado School of Mines. There was another adaptation to three political parties, what would happen. Um, then there were articles on consensus building. There was one on Kremer's model, which is economics. And a year, within a year of the publication of this, Kremer's model won a new Nobel Prize. So we were very, um, Dan Flath wrote that article, it was very timely. Uh, MIT has an initiative with Haiti where they have translated interactive differential equations, a wonderful set of um, software to Haitian Creole. Uh, that paper and the next one, Equity by Visualization, are both concerned with the social justice problem of students having to take classes in not their native language and how much more difficult it is and how do you, uh, how can you overcome it? So two good ideas there. So lots of good things, but just go to codee.org and you can see those articles. The new special issue, Engaging Learners, Differential Equations in Today's World, uh, didn't, get as many papers because of COVID, but we're very happy with what we got. This first paper really caught our attention. It's a Calculus II class in Albany State University, Albany, Georgia, called Internationalizing the, uh, cal to the Calculus and So the idea here, I'll show, these are some of the topics and individual papers, but I will tell you what Professor Ofotoli asked of his students. They were to work either as individuals or in pairs at the beginning of the course to pick a real world topic where a population seemed to be increasing or decreasing at an ever greater or slower rate. And they were assigned at the beginning of the semester to research the culture and background of that topic so that they would be prepared at the end of the semester when they reached their first differential equation, y prime equals ky, to solve that and find parameters, i.e. k, to fit the data that was found in their research and predict future behavior. But also, this I think was Ophodoli's genius to suggest interventions that might diminish the rate of change. And this was what really, really engaged the students. They dug into the topics, did the math, thought hard about that intervention requirement. They wrote up their results as proper research reports. They gave presentations both in class and at regional meetings. And in 2018 and 2019, they were able in some cases to have the teams report their ideas to appropriate local agencies and have the agencies respond that they would try some of those interventions. So, so there's a lot in that first article. The other articles in this issue are 
in Chesapeake Bay modeling the ecological dynamics for three species of fish. Um, qualitative analysis. Here we have Glenn Letter who spoke yesterday in this conference. Um, he came to our attention talking about past and future of endangered whale populations. And in this article, he really refined some of the modeling to get better results. Uh, Francesca Bernardi and Mun Munacher Aminian have taught more than once uh, origins of the SIR model from the history starting with the plague in India and ending with the critical application to the Ebola epidemic in 2014 to 2016. And our last paper, Michael Barg at Niagara University and his students responded to COVID in the middle of the semester by forming a collaborative research group that was a really good thing for everyone. So if any of these are of immediate interest, you can write to jmmcodee at gmail.com and I can send you a preprint. Um, unfortunately, our webmaster is totally tied up until the middle of March. So it's not going to be up on the web until the end of March, I'm afraid. I just want to end with my absolute favorite modeling first example, since this is semi ODE. This is from anesthesiology, and it was back in the 1970s, long before the computer graphics revolution. My students had an option to write an extra credit paper explaining any application we had not covered in the course. One pre-med student had worked over the summer with an anesthesiologist who noticed that the more anesthetic a patient received, the faster they recovered from it. This is so anti-intuitive. She, the anesthesiologist, had looked to the mathematics to see if there were an explanation, and there was. She modeled the solution, the situation, with a diffusion equation. Yes, that's a PDE, but introduction to partial differential equations was in our course, which was a whole collection of topics for non-STEM majors. And the story is so worth telling that I have to do it. My student was able to explain what the anesthesiologist had done with some hard work, writing the DEs in cylindrical coordinates to model the veins through which the drug is injected and then dissipates. So here is, are some excerpts from his work. We won't delve into the details, but the basic diffusion equation is given with D being the diffusivity constant and C the concentration function. And then considering the nerve cell as an infinite cylinder, he transformed it into cylindrical coordinates, which turns out to be a Bessel's equation. And guess what? Bessel equations are have solutions that are Bessel functions, which doesn't mean anything to a student, especially in 1970, who has no computer graphics in hand. However, they were able to get plot results from this. And there we have a plot of resulting solutions for five different initial doses. So on the left, you can see that the more anesthetic you start with, the faster it dissipates. So I just loved that example of working from some data and guesses. So may we continue our synergy with Simeode. It's been wonderful and so fulfilling for me to have a life full of differential equations. Thanks to you all. Thank you very much, Beverly. We all, I'm sure we all appreciate it.
so at this point in the conference, we have a short break scheduled, but I'm sure if there's a few questions for Beverly, she'd be happy to answer. <laughs> Feel free to either put it in the chat or turn on your mic. I'll admit, Beverly, it was that last example that uh, that stood out that much to me. I can't imagine trying to plot Bessel's <laughs> function by hand like that. And yeah, that that is su super impressive for a student. I am shocked. And I also had no idea that was a thing. <laughs> I had no right. idea that the more. <laughs> That's why it's my absolute favorite. I just love it but it does also show how lucky we are today to have so much available in te with technology i mean you'd still have to do the steps of modeling and transferring to cylindrical coordinates and all right. that but um, you get more graphs i've never gone back to it i've tried to look up the original author you know, there was some problem. Um, she was afraid that her work that she was trying to publish would be compromised with the student project and we had to promise that it wouldn't. Uh, but I've never been able to find that online. I've tried. That first paper. Any other questions or comments for Beverly, I see we have lots of thank yous in the chat, which I completely agree with. Well done. Oh, thank you. Um, I have a question uh, about how many articles does Cody publish every year? Well, it depends. At the moment, the, there's a total of 39 on the website. Mm -hmm. 11 are in the, the first special issue. So it's not that many per year. And that's one of the reasons we have decided to try special issues. It was originally thought, no, trying to do what the Journal of Humanistic Mathematics does would be too much without any funding. We would just take articles as we could get them. And now we're looking to get more, but the old ones are still being downloaded all the time. There's one on Laplace transforms and other things that don't involve modeling at all. And there's plenty that do. Um, just lots and lots of good stuff. Is, is Cody actively looking for people to help with editing? Yes. Okay. And your name? <laughs> I was gonna say, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Chris, Chris McCarthy, we've corresponded. Oh, Chris, yes. Thank yeah, you. I'm still on the, thinking uh, on of bridges. bridges. That's it, yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much for the pictures you sent me. I really appreciated them. Okay. Right, thank yeah, you. Yeah, I was sorry I couldn't hear your talk. Oh, yes. no, I was. <laughs> this is fine. Thank yeah, you. Just too much overlap, but they say everything's recorded, so I will go back to it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, everything is recorded and it will be available at a later date. At this, at this point, we're not certain how long the editing and posting is going to take, but we do have people that are going to be on that. That's great. And what about um, the slides? Brian said yesterday that he could insert his slides immediately and make them available. And I'd be happy to do that with mine. Okay. I, I will let him know that, yes, that we were talking about that as well, having the slides available with the talks when, when they are posted. Okay. But he was indicating that he could put it in right now in the schedule so that people could access the slides now. I had he not said that he had control. I was going to say he has that control. I do not. So I was not aware of this. <laughs> anyway, yeah, it's all and people can write to me or whatever. Okay, perfect. Yeah. The good thing about these avatars all day, you're welcome to hit look for Beverly in the search at some point this weekend, right? And start a chat with her to ask for other resources, links, slides, anything like that. All right. Well, let's go ahead and take a short break then. The next session starts at 11.30 and I will hope to see everyone around later today. Yes, okay. Thank you so much, everyone.
<laughs> Good to see you. Very nice <laughs> talk. <laughs> yes, I've enjoyed our correspondence and I'm looking yeah. forward to more, but it's just so busy. Yeah, so uh, really, I would like to have your side. Yeah, it's very interesting. I was not aware of the, the CODI and so on. So I really, very interesting topics here. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. yeah, Victoria was someone who had not been aware of CODI till we met a couple of years ago. And uh, so I was really pleased that Brian suggested we make a talk here. Yeah, yeah <laughs> this is very interesting. Yeah, I will email you so that I can remind you to get the slides. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay.